in just a little while. Does that sound good? That sounds good to me. Okay. So welcome everybody to our next virtual hiking club meeting where we are going to talk about the great state of Alaska. And we have a tall task today to cover a big portion of the state, not just one spot, but we have special guests in. We have DR, one of our local beloved uh, attendees to the program with his daughter, Gracie. And DR just recently visited Anchorage, Alaska area, and some of the surrounding trails, and he'll be able to tell us more about that. And we have Karen Tielek, and she's zooming in all the way from Kotlik, Alaska. So wow. she is far away. I mean, yeah. I couldn't even yeah. pull up the number of mileage, but I think it's close to 5,000 miles yeah. between Chattanooga and Kotlik, Alaska. So I just want to show you all, yeah. before we get started, where that is compared to where we are in Chattanooga. Okay, sweetie. Do you want to talk? So starting with, starting with DR, with his visit out to Anchorage, do you all see where we are here in Tennessee? <laughs> yeah, if you drove out to Anchorage, it would take you 69 hours. Wow. Yeah, it's over 4,000 miles to Anchorage from Chattanooga. Yeah. And now Kotlik. Yeah, Kotlik. Here it is. It can't even find a way there. Because there are no roads out to Kotlin. Right. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But Karen yeah. is way out here. Yeah. So you see where wow. DR was in Anchorage, and Karen yeah. is right here. Okay. So this is just south of Nome, and the Arctic Circle is right up here. Hmm. So I just wanted you all to see where where our special guests have been and are now and how cool this is going to be to be able to talk with them about their experiences. So I have a question for everybody. If you can raise your hand, let me know, have you ever been to Alaska before? Nope. <laughs> Grace has. Tyree says no. Grace has. Karen says, yeah, she has. So Karen, we were just talking about this. Karen has not left Alaska. So we were telling wow. her some things about no. Chattanooga and Tennessee. I have not. Some differences. And we'll get into that later in the meeting. Um, also, who had a chance to watch the videos or check out that interactive website from the email I sent out last week? Raise your hand if you had a chance to check those out. Tyrese, do you want to show us your drawing from mm -hmm. those videos? I can. I'm frozen. And can you explain it to us like you did to me earlier? Mm -hmm. So this is the um, birds. This is the uh, eggs right oh, there. Hold on, Tyrese. Let us see the, the map there, the picture in the oh, camera. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so this is the... Um, the birds, this is the boy going hiking, this is the lake, this is the grunt wood, and then this is the helicopter in in, in, La, in Alaska. Nice. This is nice. the egg. So Tyrese captured a little bit of each video that we sent out where we covered the delta and the bird life there. That's where Karen is. She's in the delta. We talked about Anchorage area and Denali, Mount Denali, mm -hmm. uh, and a few other ridge trails. So we didn't cover all of Alaska, but we tried to hit some of the key parts mm -hmm. of the state. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what we have is a slideshow with pictures from DR from his visit there, which DR, when did you visit? Yeah, when About three weeks ago. Just three weeks ago. Oh. This is fresh. Oh. Um, it's pretty fresh. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> So this is like the real time 
presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to share some of those pictures and DR, I'll let you talk about sure. what it was like up there okay. and speak to your experience. Sure. Just... And while we do that, if you have a question, um, please raise your hand or you can type it into the chat box and we'll get to you as soon as we can. <laughs> okay, Michelle. There we okay. go. All right. All right. Okay. So I have to tell you and confess that I took this picture from the internet. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't remember sending that one. <laughs> no. But, oh, and this right here, this is a moose, everybody. Just Michelle, just can you hear me? Yes. This is Denise, and Seth is frozen, and so is his computer. And oh. I have no way of stopping it. <laughs> oh, so, no. Um, he can't see anything you're doing, but we can hear you. Okay. Denise, if you want to try to leave the meeting and rejoin, that might fix the problem. I was trying. Okay. I'm Denise, having Denise, a really hard time. Denise, <laughs> I can remove you. Okay, do that. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So while they're doing that, dear, if you'll hold on just a moment. Sure. So we can see about getting them back on. And I have a question, Michelle. Oh, yes, Elaine. So you talked about oh. how that Karen lives in Alaska. Did you remove us? I'm sorry. We're, we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not responding at all. I'm trying to remove you. <laughs> um, when it's, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna try and do it again. See if I can shut it down. I've tried several times. I'm sorry, go ahead. Seth can listen. That's okay. Yeah, you may have to like control alt delete it. But Michelle, you mentioned that Karen's in Alaska and DR, you said that you just had a trip three weeks away, but yes, Mich or three weeks ago, excuse me. But Michelle, did you tell everybody why your name is up there as well? Oh, well, uh, so yeah, I have not explained that yet. So it was seven years ago when Karen and I met in Kotlik, Alaska. Oh, wow. Yes. So I had a yeah. job up there working with the Girl Scouts of Alaska um, in rural camps. So Karen was in the first village that I visited as a rural camp counselor. And nice. then from there, I'll show you later on in the slideshow the different villages that I went to for camp. But that was uh, my first experience in Alaska. Mm -hmm. And that is how I was able to meet Karen. And then we just reconnected these last mm -hmm. few days ago when she agreed she could come on as a special guest and talk yeah. about Kotlik and talk about Alaska. So this is a fun reunion for us. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Elaine, are you seeing okay. if... Oh, Seth is still here. Seth, you can hear us. You can hear us, Seth? I think so. Thank okay. You. Okay. Um, we are going to move ahead, and Seth and Denise, if you can hear us, if you can try to sign on with a phone and then see if that works and cancel out on the computer, that might be another way to do it. But for the sake of time, we are going to get started. And this is being recorded too, so it can be watched later. All right, here we go. DR. Yep. Oh, I forgot I threw this in there too. Just for people to get an idea of how big Alaska is compared to the lower 48 states. It's huge. It's huge. And then... I threw this up, DR. Sorry, I keep holding off on letting you get started. Um, yeah, just to show fine. people where Anchorage is. So, right in this area. Is this right, DR, where you that were? That is correct. And yep. uh, 
right over here. You can't see it on the map, but Kotlik is right out here. Okay, yep. take it away, DR. I was gonna say, if you want to go back to that previous slide, I can point out not only I did Anchorage three weeks ago, but nine months ago, we did a cruise up the coast of Alaska from Ketchikan uh, to Juneau and Sitka. We visited all those little places over here to the right. Um, oh, very cool. There is a lot to Alaska. So, but you asked me about hiking, and so that was the most recent experience. I, I have a sister um, and brother-in-law that live in Alaska. They live in Anchorage. Um, he just retired from the Air Force there. And so I think, uh, and she's a, a realtor. So I have a feeling they're not moving. They're going to stay in Alaska. And uh, they've, been, they've been to Alaska a couple of times on their tours of duty. Um, and then so when he retired, I wasn't shocked that he ended up staying in Alaska. Um, so I went to visit them, spent a week with them uh, three weeks ago. And uh, because of the COVID stuff, uh, they told us that basically I was quarantined for 14 days from the time I got there. So there was no place that I could go visit, but I could take hikes. So we went out on hikes every day because it's the only thing you could do. Wow. Okay. And is that where you took these pictures, DR? Uh, well, yes and no. The moose, you pointed out the moose, there are a lot of animals. In fact, one of the things that my brother and sister-in-law, my, my sister and my brother-in-law have to deal with is the fact that we live here in the South. We have wild animals not far from where we live, right? Right. But right. in Alaska, it's, it's real. Yeah, they do not let their children go outside alone because they've seen moose, They've seen black bear, they've seen lynx, uh, and uh, even had a black bear um, crash through their bedroom uh, window and tear up the bedroom and leave. Um, my sister's son was the only one who's had an encounter like that with a black bear and didn't get a scratch on him. He shuffled out of bed and, and zoomed away. Uh, so it was it was remarkable but the wildlife there is very real so uh, that's a picture of a moose in their front yard and, and that's taken from the front door I opened the front door and got that picture Wow wow uh, and these I wish we had a picture of a person next to them to see how big they are um, uh, yeah general idea of how tall that moose is that moose is probably about uh seven maybe eight foot tall up, up the hump wow so, so it, it it's a good size and that's and that's considered a baby <laughs> that's a young moose wow so for those of you in this meeting who know coach jacob part of our basketball program that moose yep. is taller than him yep Wow. Wow. That Uncle Moose. And, it, it, and you'll see him. While I was there, I saw uh, about uh, three or four moose walking through the yard, just, you know, nibbling from the trees and just walking on. And if they, if they see you, they run real quick and they're gone. So I got this picture, and as soon as I got this picture, it was gone. <laughs> but... But before it saw me, it's just walking very slowly through the yard. Wow. And then right next to it, what is this, um, this mountain here? Where we call place? that one Flat Rock um, because if you, if you see at the top of it, it looks very flat. Uh, that's about a 15-minute walk from the house. Um, in fact, again, it's – where they live is so beautiful. There were so many days that I, I said I could just sit there and look out that front window and just take pictures of the mountains around them because it, it is stunning. I think they have four neighbors that I saw, four houses. Um, so it's not very populated. And, and a little airfield if anybody had the, 
the money to get an airplane. Uh, they could land a little private airplane not far, you know, at the end of their driveway. But uh, it was very beautiful. That one was a nice walk out. And, and again, this was, what, uh, May? And look, there's still snow all around. Now, it's snow, and so you think it's cold, but it was, you know, 70 degrees outside. It was nice and warm, but this, but because they get so much snow, there's still snow on the mountain. We actually had uh, my uh, nieces and nephews got, got into a fight, had a snowball fight there on the mountain in shorts. So uh, that, that's Flat Rock. And that was a beautiful hike. Um, I don't know how many pictures I sent you. Um, but I just have, I think, two more after this. Okay. One. So from that view, you can look out and you can see all of Anchorage. So this sits up above Anchorage. Okay. And you can look out and see Anchorage. And then you can look to the left and you'll see uh, the ocean. And so the, the ocean's there to the left. Uh, Anchorage is there to the right. Um, and it's a beautiful view and it's, and it's a beautiful hike. And as I said, very few people out on the hike. We saw more animals than anything else. Um, in fact, if you want to show the next picture on our way back from this hike, not that one, <laughs> that was another day. This is who we ran into on our, on our way back from the hike. And that's a black bear. And I thought the black bear was the biggest of bears for, you know, for whatever reason, I thought, you know, that these bears will get up to 900 pounds, a thousand pounds. But that's not the biggest bear that I saw. So no, I'm didn't. going to guess the biggest bear that you saw was this one? Uh-huh. That's the one. <laughs> and, they, and they're about 1,500 pounds, maybe 2,000 pounds. <laughs> so that weighs as much as a car. They're wow. huge animals. Uh, and those claws... Those are pretty intense. They are. Yeah. Yeah, we, we keep our distance. This is Zoom, this is zoom factor here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Elaine, you've got a question. I do have a question. So my, how far away were you from these bears? Not far enough, honestly. <laughs> um, they are all, again, in the wild, they were all over. And so I, I, I was shocked um, because uh, John, uh, my brother-in-law said that. He's like, uh, he goes, you're actually, he goes, I was expecting you'd see a lot of moose because we see moose all the time. And, and he said he saw lynx the week before I got there. But then the fact that we saw bears was, was just a treat. So uh, that was not expected. Um, he goes, you don't see them very often, but, uh, and, and that black bear was right by the path. If you can see, go back to that other picture, you'll see he, this guy's out in the woods. So he's, he's not a problem, but that black bear was right by the road. <laughs> he was, they nor yeah, yeah, right. The path is right there on the, on the little corner. <laughs> Uh, of the picture so uh yeah we were like we thought it was a moose at first and then as we got closer we realized and uh, we were like just keep going just keep going just keep going. <laughs> don't stop <laughs> so. Uh, so dr were you a little scared seeing these bears i probably should have been <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big guy and I'm, I don't scare easily, but I should have been at talking with some people afterwards and they told me how, how dangerous it could have been. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, we, uh, we practiced safety and kept our social distance, but that wasn't far. We weren't far. That picture's not far from where we were, where we were. So, um, okay. Wow. That, that was a shock and that was a surprise. Oh, but it's yes. a, but Alaska is a beautiful place. I, I and, and the fact that it's daylight when I visited it was daylight almost all the time. So 
I have pictures at four o'clock in the morning, at 12 o'clock noon, and at midnight, and they all look like they were taken at the same time. Right, Karen? <laughs> It, it feel that sun is up and yeah. it was so beautiful that my, my nieces went out for a drive at 10 o'clock at night. And I said, where are you going? They said, well, because of COVID, they can't go anywhere. So they're just going to go out for a drive. And, and I said, what are you doing? And what are you seeing? They're like people gardening, <laughs> you know, people out on hikes. People are taking hikes at 11 o'clock at night. And they're like, yeah, it's, it's still sunny as what we'd see at four or five in the afternoon. So uh, you can take hikes all day long. And so I kept waiting for it to get dark uh, during the week that I was there. I never saw the sunset. It, it never really got dark for me. Um, I, either I fell asleep before it got dark or <laughs> when I got up, it was bright and sunny again. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, DR, thank you so much. Was there anything else you wanted to share about your time there? Um, DR. Yeah. About the Uncle Moose. Got to see a moose. Uh, I, I think Alaska is one of the prettiest places that I, I've ever seen. In fact, there were times where I was talking to John and Elisa and I said, you know, I could see why you'd want to, to move out here and, and live out here. Um, but then when I tried to make phone calls or play a video game or send, send photos and I realized they only had 25 megabytes per month, um, I, I realize how grateful I am to live in Chattanooga, Gig City, where we get the fastest internet in the world. And I said, that's why I live in Chattanooga. <laughs> oh, well, DR, thank you for sending those pictures in. That was sure. lucky for us to see it all up close like that. Through it you. was beautiful. I was grateful to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... So then, Karen, you represent a different part of Alaska, and yeah. is there any chance yeah. that you yeah. can walk outside and show us what it looks like in your backyard right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hold on. And while you're doing that, I'll tell everybody. So this is going to be very different than what it looks like in Anchorage or in Denali uh, National Park. And as Karen was telling us, what she has there is willow shrubs or small willow trees by the banks of the rivers. But these trees that we have here, the huge oaks and the huge, yes. uh, just all of our trees here, she does not have there. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's kind of raining today, so. <laughs> well, don't go in the rain. Don't worry about that. But <laughs> okay, so this is where I live. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Whoa. And let me spotlight your video uh, real quick. Like I said, uh, we, yeah. We don't have really um, much trees out here. Um, we just have, it's pretty flat, but um, also it's, we got a lot of grass, so yeah. Yes, Karen, can you do that panoramic view again real quick of the tundra? Yeah. Okay, thanks. I have your video spotlighted yeah. so everyone can see it. That's cool, Karen. There it is. Mm -hmm. And for those of you don't that don't know, we don't have cars out here. Um, so we have four wheelers and like we use bikes or we use a boat. So yes. Yeah. And in the winter, Karen, what do you use? We use snow machines. Snow machines. Snow machines, man. That's good, man. Yeah. Excuse me, Michelle. Did she say snow machines? Yeah, yes, Evelyn. Snowmobiles. Yeah, snow machines. Snow machines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so, like you saw from MapQuest, it says it can't find a way there. Why? Because, like Karen said, like Karen said, there are no roads. Right. So, when I was flown from Anchorage to Kotlik, I, I took a, a small jet to, I think it was St. Mary's. Is that right, Karen? There's a St. Mary's close by. Yeah. Village. And then from St. Mary's on a small yeah. bush plane with four passengers. Nope. Yeah, four passengers out to Kotlik. So it was just a six-seater plane. Yeah. And that is how we got to Kotlik. Yeah. So, Karen, before I get into some of these pictures, yeah, and, uh, I wondered if you could teach us a few words yes, in the Yupik language. Just do your language voice. Okay. Like, for instance, okay. can you um, teach us how we would say hello in Yupik? Hello in Yupik. So, it's we have our dialect is um pretty i'd say hard to like speak some words could be um hard to speak but some may not but for the word uh hello it means waka waka what the waka. <laughs> okay yeah like waka waka yeah and then if you want to say yeah and if you want to say how are you you say what in the world you say Janaji I mean care yeah you got it <laughs> good job Tyrese <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> if you saw a moose and well, you if say, you, I'm moose. <laughs> is, is called the moose is called Dun Dubak. What the Dun Dubak? Dubak. Dun Dubak. Dubak. Oh, so that's you want to try that, Josh or Tyrese? That's me. He's moose. Wait a minute. We're gonna try it. Wait a minute. Sure. You yeah. said wait a minute. Yeah, you ready, Tyrese? You ready? Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Dubak. Or maybe not Dubak. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and then what about those bears we saw, Karen? How would we say bear? Yeah, how would we say bear? That is called, that is called a jagayak. What the hell? Because it's like, I wouldn't touch anything. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's kind, it kind of means like vicious we, and mean. They're not so mean. I haven't touched it. Did he get thrown away? Nice. Maybe it's in the trash. Nice. And then one more that I would like for us to learn. How do we yeah. say goodbye? How do we say goodbye? Biura. 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 <laughs> yeah. Biura. Very cool. Thank you. Biura. Yeah. Now we know a few words in the Yupik dialect. Yep. You got right. So, Karen, I'm going to share my screen with some pictures and then ask you a few questions as we go. Oh, okay. We're going to travel over to the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. So, there was a video I sent out that talked about all of the birds in the Delta. And this is the delta right here where you can see my cursor circling. Mm -hmm. So right over here, this picture is just zoomed in. And this was, uh, I'll show you real quick. So I carried this with me when I had my job in Alaska. I took this out of a magazine on one of the planes. 
so that I could have a map of where I was going. <laughs> because for me, I was, I was pretty far removed from everything I knew. I left my phone behind in Anchorage. Um, and I had one coworker that I traveled with and we went from village to village. So I was sort of cut off from the world that I knew and clung to my maps. Yep. See where things were. Uh, and I'll show you that plane ride that I took. This was basically my itinerary or ticket where it showed the passengers, the pilot's name, where we were leaving from and where we were going to. So pilot Jake, that was it. It was a lot more casual up there than it is here in the lower 48 states. Wow. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. Come back. And Karen, you have traveled, if you'll just fill people in, from Kotlik down to Anchorage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did you go to Anchorage for? Yeah, what you go for, Karen? Um, I went for school, college, and... I was there for about a year, and I pretty much majored in elementary education. Oh, nice. Very nice. Nice. Yeah. That's very nice, Kim. So, yeah. I pulled up as many pictures as I could from mm -hmm. my time there, and this is, I think you took this picture last month, Karen, is that right, of yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and who are you holding in this picture? That is my niece, Helen. Oh, she's cute. Yeah. And was this taken in Kotlet? <laughs> yes. Okay. That was during the time of um our river breakup. Yes. Uh, which I wanted to ask you about this. So when I was in Kotlik, several people told me that in years past, during the breakup of the glaciers of the ice, they saw a polar bear floating on a chunk of ice down the river out to the Bering Sea right by Kotlik. Uh, and I have been wondering since then yeah. if that was true or not. That is true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So do you see polar bears, I, Karen? Um, we don't usually see them out there, but we do see um, black bears or the brown bears. Because mm. the, um, the polar bears are more like above Alaska, if you know. Because yes. no. it's, I think it's more colder up there than here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, and this picture here, this was in, I believe it was Tuluksak, a different village during a fiddle festival for the 4th of July. Um, so this was one of the few pictures that I had yeah. with a camper and my coworker, Sam. Mm -hmm. So then out in the tundra, Karen, I dug up these pictures from some of the villages, and I don't remember if any of these were taken in Kotlik specifically, but this picture right here, can you tell us what this is or what it's used for in the villages? Um, that is a tundra tea. So we use that as like, it's like tea, but from the tundra, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we could, the way we have that is we um, put it in a kettle and then we boil it with uh, water, hmm. hot water. Yeah. I remember making that tea quite a bit when I was there. <laughs> and these are yeah. some of the other delicate flowers that you'll find in the tundra. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about those at all? Either one of those? Um, 
I think the one on the top right is a lupine. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a lupine flower, but um, I'm not too sure what kind of uh, flower that is. Well, there, I was amazed at how many different flowers there were if you looked um, close enough down to the, the permafrost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this picture, I can't remember which village this was in, because Kotlik, um, being a boardwalk community, I don't think we shared that with everybody yet, but meaning that a lot of the homes are built yeah. on stilts, right, Karen? Yeah. And you have wooden We're boardwalks over some of the marshy area to connect the homes and to connect you to um, some of the yeah. buildings that you have there in the village. Yeah. Um, the reason we're we're on like stilts is because where I'm at, like our village, there's a lot of water, and so we have to be put on stilts, and we have a boardwalk because um, like I said, we're in a kind of um like swampy area kind of place. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. This is very nice. So this picture, mm. um, this picture was taken a little further south from where Karen is in, um, I think it was Scammon Bay, this one was. And you can see the houses are yeah, very that's colorful. Yeah, Scammon Bay. That's Scammon? Okay, I'm glad you could there validate that for yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so most of the pictures that I had were from Scammon Bay, and this was right on the edge, um, right on the coastline leading out to the Bering Sea. So from, I'm going to go back to this map here. So Scammon Bay is just here. Kotlik is right here. So you can see Kotlik is really close to the sound Yeah. So, and Karen, tell us how many people about are in your village? Um, we have about 700 people here. And it could be rising, but the last time we checked, it was about 700. Okay. And to give people um, a reference, I think Hamilton County, Elaine, correct me if I'm wrong, but is over 100,000 people. Is that yeah. about right, Elaine? Yeah. So we've got quite a few more people down here in Chattanooga than Karen does there in Kotlik. <clears throat> because Kotlik and the villagers are pretty remote. Yeah. They're off the beaten path. So here were some more pictures from Scammon Bay, some more of the flowers, the small flowers you can see. Um, and what's amazing about the Delta is that 50% of it, almost 50% is water. So you can see these networks of, of rivers and streams that all lead out into the Bering Sea. So it's, you can see there are no trees in this picture, just small bushes in the distance and the tundra. And out here, the Bering Sea is off to the left with that network of rivers and streams to the right. So I was really excited in Scammon Bay to have a hill to climb. Mm -hmm. Because um, there aren't too many hills out in the Delta, right, Karen? Yeah, right, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I was in Scammon Bay, I was able to take a boat ride. This picture was taken at 1 a.m., believe wow. it or not. So 
Uh, right now was about the time that I left for Alaska seven years ago to start the job. And I think this was taken around the end of mid-July, these pictures. And you can see there were some sea lions out on the rocks. This was along the coastline from Scammon Bay, where I joined a few people to go deep sea halibut fishing. This was our, our guide. We went out 10 miles down the coast and 20 miles into the ocean uh, with Randall, our guide, on this 12-foot flat bottom boat. It was a kind of a bumpy ride. So some of us on the boat had fancy fishing gear. Randall just had a line, uh, basically um, twine and a stick that he would wrap the twine up on and a hook at the end of it. And he was the only one to catch anything from our group. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. So this picture, I didn't, I couldn't find the, the picture of myself. Um, I had a rough time out there. I, I kind of lost all of my meal. I kept telling them I was trying to bring in more fish. So yeah, he was the only one to catch any fish out there, but this was pretty far off the coast. And then, Karen, tell us, these bugs that we see, are you having a problem with mosquitoes right now in Kotlik? Yeah, there, there's probably more than any other village because we have grass and they like to be in the grass. Yes, and you have a lot of grass. Yeah. So I'd say this summer we are pretty much having like the worst, like more mosquitoes. You might need a, yeah. a mosquito net for your head. Do you ever use these? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. And Karen, I've dug this up. This is the same bug spray that I took to Alaska seven years ago. What? I used, yeah, the same one. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't go through it because I'll tell you all, there are so many mosquitoes out there. Josh, do you have a question? Um, are there many Russians living in Alaska currently? Um, not that I know of, but there is more um Alaskan natives. There's different types. There's um, what my um ethnicity is a Yupik or Native American, which is but I am a Yupik. Okay. There is Nupiaks. There's um. At the Baskins, there's Clinkets and Simsians, and I can't remember what the um one in the south is, southeastern. Okay. Yeah. And the other language, you'll be able to say this better than I can, Karen. The other dialect. Um, Dina Inu? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Other than you pick. <laughs> so when I traveled down to Bristol it's... Bay, uh, Lake Iliamna, they yeah. were speaking Dina Inu versus you pick up in Kotlik, where yeah. you were. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go back, and by the way, I know we're running over on time, so if anyone needs to leave, feel free to, to leave the meeting because it'll be recorded and you can check it out later. Oh. But back to these pictures. I think I'm almost done with them. This was leading out the river that led out into the bay, which you can see in the distance there. Okay. 
so that was about it that I had for the Delta pictures. Uh, but I do have some more questions for you, Karen, for the group. I think this will be really interesting for everyone to hear. Okay. Is, is what you do for fun in Kotlick? Um, well, um, there, because we are a small village, we don't get to do much. Um, pretty much the kids play ball at the basketball court or they hang out with their friends anywhere, like just right outside. Or if you want to get out of the village, you could uh, go hunting. During the summer, you could go fishing, you could go to fish camp. Um, and during the winter, you can uh, go, um, I don't know, um, you could go trapping. Um, nice. A lot of people, mostly go to the hills, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we can relate to you on some of those sports. We have someone who's not in this meeting who is a fisherman. He would probably love to go to fish camp. There's, uh, so Karen, talking, thinking about fish and food, the food that is eaten in Kotlik is a little different than what we eat here in Chattanooga. Yeah. Some things that come to mind for me yeah. was um, seagull egg potato salad. Mm -hmm. It may have been in a different village where um, that was a delicacy. Yeah. So we're pretty much probably way different than like other parts of the world so um you know the moose we do eat those um we also eat whales and we also eat seals um the types of birds we eat are the um ducks the uh, swans and so yeah and there are some animals that we don't get out here but we still able to like have some from another village that's <sighs> not near us and something else with the fish Karen and I were remembering this in my week in Kotlik, someone gifted me with a bag of dried smelt and a huge syringe yeah. filled with seal oil. And so you're supposed to put the seal oil all over the dried smelt and eat it. And I couldn't do it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Couldn't put the seal oil on. It smells so strong. Yeah. But it's something that a lot of people there love, right, Karen? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. something it's oh, probably, uh, it's probably the best like dressing to go with any native food. Mm. And walking around the villages, I would see big racks outside the houses um, laid with fish to dry in the sun. All over the villages. Yeah. Yeah, they have they have different food in Alaska than uh, it, they sound similar, but they're not the same, right? When we were there, we they had yeah. reindeer yeah. dogs, which is like a hot dog, but it's made with reindeer meat. And uh, we also yeah. I went to a place called Moose Moose Tooth Pizza. Did you ever been to that, yeah. Karen? Yeah. There in Anchorage? Yeah. Moose tooth. That's it's my favorite. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves moose yeah. tooth. And I said, what yeah. is it about this pizza that, that makes it so special? It's apricots and yeah. carrots it's on a pizza. I've never had an apricot carrot yeah. pizza, but it was delicious. 
Um, I, I, I yeah. said, I, 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 I'm missing Moose Tooth Pizza right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. So as we're uh, coming near the end, a couple of things I wanted to ask you, Karen, is about the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. Have you seen them in the winter up there in Kotlik? Yeah. Um, we only get the green colored ones. We don't get the, um, like, the purple is pink one, so... Because it's, like I said, it's not very cold where mm. I'm at. So we only get the green ones out here. Karen, does it look anything like this picture? Um, that one's more better because ours are not very bright as that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just took that picture yeah. from the internet. I don't know where it was taken, but I think it has too many trees and mountains to be Kotlik. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, a couple of things that we didn't share with you all about the mountains. We'll transition kind of to Denali real quick before we have to wrap up. Is that Denali is mm -hmm. uh, the highest peak in North America. Mm -hmm. And it's 3.5 miles high. And it what? usually takes, yeah, it usually takes, I think it's three, mm -hmm. three weeks to climb to the top of it. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you real quick a picture of Denali. So there's Denali in the background. Oh, yeah. There in the front. It's just huge. Massive mountain. Mm. And the Yukon River that snakes down through the delta where Karen is, that is almost 2,000 miles long. It's a very long river. Yeah. The longest or river in, well, it's, it's the longest river in Alaska. Mm hmm and with yeah. that, there are more than 3,000 rivers in Alaska and over 3 million lakes. Mm. A lot of water. Yeah. So it's not just mountains and huge, big scenery. It's also the tundra and the lakes and the rivers. Alaska is very diverse. Yeah. Oh, this has been so cool. So cool to see you, Karen. <laughs> And DR, I'm so glad you could share your travels too. Thanks. And who knew you shared that in common about uh, moose, moose toothpick pizza? Moose tooth pizza. Moose tooth pizza. Yeah. Uh, Josh, do you have a question? They do, they do deliver, so you can order online if you want them shipped to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Josh, what do you have? Um, I only have a couple of questions. Um, my question, my first question, um, do they play any hockey in Alaska? Uh, yes. Yes, they do. Yep, you got it right. Cool. Good question. Yeah. And my um, other... Go ahead. I was going to say, um, another thing about sports, um, where I'm at, we don't have soccer. We don't have, um, hockey out here, though. We only get basketball, we get volleyball, um, we get cross country which is track and um yeah those are own oh nyo nyo we do get nyo which is um a native youth olympics um if you're able to you could uh, check that up and you'll see the 
um, like the different types of um, NYO games you get to play. Very cool. And um, my other question, not related to Alaska, but it's a question for um, DR. I noticed mm -hmm. you have a professor um, title to your name. May I ask what um, field of study um, you have an expertise in as well? Uh, I've had 14 years of college and seminary, and I teach uh, film studies. I teach Bible, and I teach uh, creative writing. Cool. And Josh, the theater program that you were in, mm -hmm. that very yes. first one, DR filmed it. Oh, oh gosh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been that. three, at least three years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Long small time. world. Right. And it is a small I world. Wow, well, right? <laughs> What's that? Like? I think Tyrese, weren't you? I think Tyrese was in it as well. Yeah, oh Tyrese was a part of that. Yes, I remember that now. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Are, there, are there any more questions for Dr. or Karen before we end our Alaska meeting? I was going to share my T-shirt. I meant to wear this, and I forgot to put it on until we were talking. But this is from. Ketchikan, Alaska, and it's, I love Star Wars, and so it's Star Wars, but I love the, the quote that's at the bottom, which says, may the forest be with you, because that's one thing Alaska has a lot of, is a lot of forest. Yes. I love that. Thanks for showing us that shirt. Thanks. Um, well, thank you again so much, everybody. Uh, for coming and Karen awesome that you could zoom in all the way from Kotlik, Alaska Yay. <laughs> uh, keep enjoying your time up there and we will wrap up this meeting and I'll be in touch with our next meeting next week so thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, DR. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you, DR. Thanks, Thank, you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Karen. Oh, you. I love it, Tyrese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. Gracie, thanks for letting us have your dad. No, she says no. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And Karen, tell us again, how do you say goodbye? Buha. 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 Buha, Karen. Buha. 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 Michelle, I'm thinking about trying the Zoomer size um, <laughs> program on Mondays and